From the rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, In the rafters of Rupp Arena, multiple banners and jerseys decorate the overhead beams, honoring eight national championships, 17 Final Fours, and many of the celebrated All-Americans who have helped define the overall success of the University of Kentucky basketball program. Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Macy. Throughout the rafters of Rupp series, we continue our visits with multiple members of that select group of Kentucky legends whose jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. Today's episode features Johnny Cox. At 6'4", Johnny was the reliable workhorse for Adolph Rupp's teams of the late 1950s. While at UK, he held down the starting forward position for all three years of his college career. He could score, rebound, and defend. And he's certainly one of the most versatile all-time greats to ever wear the blue and white. I recently had a chance to sit down with Johnny, and we began our conversation talking about his family background and how he developed his love for the game of basketball while growing up in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. My, they, my daddy was born and raised in, in Lee County on a farm, but they all went to Letcher County with the railroad back in the early days. My daddy was a railroader. Daddy, I lived uh, about six miles from the Virginia line. I, I, I was born and raised in Neon, in Kentucky. That's coal country. That's that's how my family got to, got to Letcher County. I lived, lived up on the side of a hill, and my brother, another guy, put up in the gold behind the house up on the hill there and uh, they put up a backboard and a rim was all we had. <laughs> we didn't have no nets. <laughs> they usually had to put a coffee sack around, around, the, around the goal. <laughs> Started shooting ball uh, up on the hill or They were talking about shooting and miss. It hit, go off the mountain, hit the river. <laughs> Learn not to miss. <laughs> so now I started playing, started playing ball uh, when I was young, I lived in a small town. There was a whole lot of kids there, but they wouldn't bus for us to do except play ball was about all. We played ball we winter and summer, basketball, football, baseball, and all that kind of stuff. We had a school team, grade school, and we had a woman for a coach. And back then, we used to, when we was going to school, we used to get the, like stars, you know, and, and uh, no matter what woman teacher, we played games, she'd always uh, tell me that, uh, what a good player I was, you know. She just, she said, the boy said, you, you're a good player. I said, uh, someday you may, may be a star in your crowns. <laughs> I'll never will forget that. Johnny began his high school career in Letcher County. He discussed playing for Hall of Fame coach Goble Ritter as a freshman and sophomore, then shared how his family's move to Hazard, Kentucky, reunited Cox with his old coach and helped prepare him for a memorable senior season. I played uh, bas at uh, Fleming Neon for two years. And then and, uh, when my daddy worked there, they closed uh, the shop down. And, uh, and uh, we had to leave up there. I pl played two years at Fleming and, and uh, we had to, uh, daddy with both the family had to move. Daddy was ready. He'd already worked 30 years on the railroad. And me come to Hazard, so I said, "I'll be got to Hazard, yeah." <laughs> Goble Ritter, he coached me at Neon, and he moved to Hazard when I was a sophomore, and and uh, maybe had moved to Hazard, you know, to work. That's how. It, but everybody says they, they, they that didn't happen, but that's the way it happened. Well, my, the year I come to Hazard, I think they won four games the whole year, and then the Next year, we went to the state. We had a little bit better team the next year. It was after the the state tournament. Yeah, I didn't, didn't nobody ever heard of me until we went to Lexington. I didn't know, I didn't, had never been out of the mountains. None. The Hazard Bulldogs went on to win the Kentucky High School State Tournament in 1955 with a 74-66 win over Adair County in the championship game at Memorial Coliseum. Cox poured in a record-breaking 127 points 
over the course of the four games and was named to the All-State Tournament team. His stellar performance confirmed the interest of Kentucky's Adolph Rupp, but other college coaches who witnessed Johnny's on-court talent jumped on board and quickly entered the recruiting competition for Johnny's college services. Uh, well, I had a lot of offers, all, all the ones. Well, I started going to Louisville to start with first. They, they, did, uh, they showed some interest that I had been talked to them about going. And then, then I talked to several more. There's, there's a guy that's coaching, ain't even starting a program in Miami, Florida. Got a coach call, call our house all the time. My mother, I never did talk to him. But, but that, see that guy from Florida calls here all the time. I said, well, you know, she calls when I ain't here. She said, well, said they're starting a program down there, but uh, they, they want to talk to you about coming coming down there. Well, I'm not going to Miami, Florida. What, what's wrong with you? I, well, I never did talk to Rub about uh, going to UK. And then I talked to her about going we used to play them all-star games back years ago, and, and, uh, and uh, we used to go over at Pikeville. And I, I talked to them before we played the you know, all-star game, <laughs> and he asked me where I wanted, what I, was, where I wanted, what I wanted to do. I said, "Well, I don't know right now." <laughs> I said, "I have no idea." I said, "But I want to come to the UK, but I don't know much about UK." Of course, Cox did sign with the Cats. And when we come back, we'll hear about Johnny's introduction to college life at the University of Kentucky. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. Johnny Cox enrolled at the University of Kentucky in the fall of 1955. At that time, NCAA rules prohibited freshmen from playing at the varsity level. Johnny and I talked about his transition from high school to college and the adjustments necessary for a kid growing up in eastern Kentucky to make it in the big city of Lexington. The day I went to Lexington, I decided to go down there. The only way I had to get down there was ride the train. So my mother and daddy met me at the depot. I was that morning at 7 o'clock. My, my mother said, my mother told me, said, son, if that's where you want to go, and I said, I don't want to see you coming back. <laughs> different lifestyle, the environment's different. It, it was for me, but I, I wasn't bad. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't going to leave and quit. I, I, was, I was used to heart, used to working back in. I worked at the lumber company here in Hazard for uh, four summers. And, I used to help, but that's all I've done was construction work. But I lived in the Diamond Hall the first year I was there, and then the next three years I lived in Kincaid Hall. Yeah, I had a roommate. I had two really, Donald Butcher, he, he went down there, he was a good player, but he didn't stay about two months and left. I tried to get him to stay, he was a good player, but he, he's just molding pants on that country over in there. I got another roommate, Charlie Webb, but he was down Tennessee, and he, he, they brought him in there, and he, he didn't come back the next year. He stayed the whole year, but he didn't come back the next year. Uh, I don't know if they run him off or he just didn't want to come back. By 1956, the Wildcats had won three national championships and were a perennial top 10 program. Adolph Rupp had recruited the top town in the nation, yet it didn't take long for Cox to figure out he felt right at home on the court with Kentucky's best ball players. You know, uh, we, of course, we didn't have that many players. We'd be always played practice with the varsity every day, you know, the varsity. I played against, played against the, the people bigger than me and older. And I, I could just about play as good as they could as a freshman. And so, uh, so I, I got that probably built my confidence up, you know, old, uh, playing against, against better, you know, better players at that time. And, and uh, you know, had a lot of confidence because I played, I played a whole lot of basketball before I went down there to practice. Johnny Cox began his sophomore season as a full-time starter. He led the team in scoring, tossing in 19 and a half points per game, and finished second in rebounding, averaging over 10 boards a game. The Wildcats finished the season 23 and five and ranked third in the nation as Johnny was named to several All-American teams for his consistent, steady play. The incredibly successful first year for Johnny Cox and the Wildcats 
ended abruptly in the finals of the Mideast Regional. Johnny remembers the 80-68 loss to the number 11th ranked Michigan State Spartans. Then shared his thoughts about the enthusiasm and expectations leading into his junior year as a Wildcat. We played in the, in the Mideast region. And we played in Michigan State. And we was ahead 15 points at half, and then it just two had got two starters you can't play their game. Yeah. Uh, hadn't, he didn't have no legs under him, and, and Ed, he he's just wore out where he hadn't been practicing or nothing. And he, he was he was a center, he's six eight, he was a center. Ah uh, yeah, well I knew we'd be, be a better team the next year because we. All, all the players we had playing the next year played most of them the year before that. So, and we, we had two or three seniors there, but all, all our players played the next year. We'd done a lot of playing together. Two years of practice and, and all them games, so I knew we'd have a good have a, We'd have a, a good team. We'll be back with more of my conversation with Johnny Cox after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. The 1957-58 Kentucky season did look promising. The Wildcats returned starters Vernon Hatton, John Kriegler, Ed Beck, Adrian Smith, and Johnny Cox from a team that finished in the Elite Eight the previous year. Johnny examined the benefits of playing a strong schedule during the 58 season, then recalls how an unfortunate injury he suffered plagued him throughout the year. It was a schedule we played, but it had something to do with it. So I tell you, we opened up at Duke, beat them four points, went to Ohio State and beat them. We come back and played Temple, and beat them in three overtime. They had one of the best teams you'd ever want to see. Well, any team come out of Philadelphia, it's got good play. They all got good players, and they, uh, they, uh, we beat them in three overtimes. And then we went to Maryland and played on a, on a Monday, and uh, they beat us. Then uh, we didn't play too good. It was, uh, they, they beat us five, five, six points, something like that. And then, then we come back and went to St. Louis, and they had a good team. We beat them and went to. Went to Dallas, Texas, played the SCMU, and they uh, beat us one point. They had a good team. They come back and played West Virginia and the UKIT. They had them rated number one in the nation. They had West, and they had, they had a real good team. They started good, and we had played catch up the whole whole night. And, and then we played Minnesota in, in the consola consolation game, and we beat them. Uh, some points, and that's when I got my hand hurt, and that's when I, had, I started having trouble. I had something pull loose in there. My knuckles, hard to shoot, and I had to t tape my fingers up like that, keep them having pain, and, and I, I had to, I had to doctor it the rest of the year. And I had, it got real, got real uh, painful have to do it. I do it every day. Every list of pain, he was a trainer. He, I just used. Whirlpool, electric stuff. I don't know what I want to do. I, I got hurt there and it was physically, I got, got a, had a bad hand, right hand. And well, that, one time we, uh, we, we I had it, done not so much therapy on it. We used to go on to, go on to Georgia Tech to play <laughs> Georgia Tech down there in Atlanta. <laughs> and I told the trainer, I said, I'm going to take that tape off of all my hands. Cause I, it bothered me for catching the ball and shooting. I said, it feels good now. So I went out there when the game started and I didn't have no tape on it. Well, it got about halfway up, um, uh, not hardly halfway up, first first half, and I got, I got, I got it jammed. Boy, I had pain in my hand. I told Rusty, I said, I gotta t put that tape back on my, on my hand. He said, well, I tell Coach Rupp, well, he told, Coach Rupp, Rupp went crazy on the bench. <laughs> I told him I was, you know, I need to be taped back up again. Well, it, he took me out of the game, and he, he, he was raving mad. Yeah, he, he took me out of that game down there, and, and they were put him back, he's mad, he didn't put, put him back in the game second half. Man, we got beat down there, we got beat down there, Georgia Tech. 
Dealing with the injured hand, Cox still managed to post strong numbers during his junior campaign. He averaged another double-double for the year with 15 points and 12 rebounds a game for a Kentucky team that was ranked in the top 10 for a majority of the season. These cats were resilient. They continually found ways to win close games late in the year. Johnny considered the team's label as the Fiddlin' Five and how they came together and peaked at the right time just as NCAA tournament play began. Fiddlin' Five. <laughs> I never heard. I never heard one of them coaches say anything about that. He plays some outstanding teams. I'm still a member of today. With her, her non-conference schedule, and he was. Yeah, everybody was good. And you, you just didn't go out there and beat people to death. And they, 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 was, they had some tough players and tough teams back then. What we done, we be, uh, our team really played good at the end of the season. I mean, we played, we played a man-to-man, -man, switching man-to-man -man defense. We, we, did, we picked it up early at the end of the year. I mean, we, we was hitting on, hitting on all cylinders. In early March of 1958, the Cats defeated Miami of Ohio in the first round of the NCAA tournament. After taking down number eight, Notre Dame, 89-56 in the finals of the Mideast region, Kentucky handed number five, Temple, a 61-60 loss in the first Final Four contest in Louisville's Freedom Hall. That win set up an epic matchup between Kentucky and the Seattle University team led by the great Elgin Baylor. I remember he's a good player. Yeah, we, we watched him play, the, watched him play, play Kansas State in the semifinal there, but he got done playing. They, they, well, they, they, you can tell they had a good team, but. They had Baylor there. He was. He watched the first half and left. And uh, you can tell he was a good player. I mean, uh, I mean he played. He was playing man-to-man uh, -man defense and switching man-to-man. -man. We, we we picked up, picked it up. Uh, we could beat anybody our damn season. Johnny Cox pumped in 24 points and grabbed 16 rebounds, and along with Vern Hatton, was named to the Final Four All Tournament team. The 84-72 victory over Seattle gave Adolph Rupp and the Kentucky Wildcats the school's fourth NCAA title. He, he, he had three players come back off that, off that roster. Tom Mills and the Johnson boy and uh, somebody else. Yeah, we had, a lot, we had a lot of new players there. I mean, that next year we, we uh, Done, done, a, done a lot of playing. We well, won one of the first 11 games. Uh, we, had a good, we had a good team or we put it all together. We'll be back with more of my conversation with Johnny Cox after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner. My father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. A single word, delicious. Johnny Cox was drafted in the fourth round of the 1959 NBA draft by the New York Knicks. He never suited up for the Knicks, though. He opted instead to sign with the Cleveland Pipers of the newly formed American Basketball League. Johnny discussed his introduction to professional basketball and his overall experience of playing for Hall of Fame coach John McClendon. I played with John two, uh, two years, about two years, a year and a half. Uh, he's a pretty good fella. Yeah. Uh, he was he was a fast breaking coach. He didn't go too much for theory, but he uh, I flew with George Steinbrenner and uh, there for for a while. And I, he was a dead loser. <laughs> so he he run it, but I don't know who all owned it. We 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 won the championship with ABA. <laughs> it was a good league. He was a good a good league, but good players, but they couldn't they couldn't. Uh, couldn't run it, didn't have the funds to, to do it with. After playing two seasons in the ABL, Johnny signed a new contract in 1962 and played a full season with the Chicago Zephyrs in the NBA. In 1964, the Zephyrs moved to Baltimore and became the Baltimore Bullets. At this point, Johnny decided to step away from the NBA and pursue a more stable career path. We took a look at his life after professional basketball, his stops along the way, and how he made his way back to the mountains of eastern Kentucky. I, I lived, lived in Michigan. I worked at Burford Continental Aviation Engineering Company. Yeah, they, they had ball up there too. I played a bar some, yeah. 
After that, I got I'm working in insurance. In the insurance, yeah, I lived in Louisville a long time. But I come, but I come back, uh, help take care of my mother. That's how I come back to Hazard. Throughout my conversation with Johnny, I could tell he still has a great love for the game of basketball and the University of Kentucky. I asked him what he thought made today's game different from the game he played more than 50 years ago. And I asked him about his memories of being a Kentucky Wildcat and what it means to have his jersey retired and hanging from the rafters of Rupp Arena. Well, there's more good players. And then, then uh, I mean, it's a little bit different. But players are bigger, faster, quicker, and stuff like that. It's a different, different type of game, more or less. But but I I, I play I, I like the game like it. I, I play better when the, the ball's moving. Yeah, you know, I, I enjoyed it. it was, UK is a good place. It's a, I, I love the school. I love the environment. I love the campus. That's what but what makes you uh, makes you a better player if you got them that type of surroundings. I, don't know, I really didn't think much about it at the time. I, I had other stuff I had I had to dwell on, and well, that, that means a whole lot. I mean, from where I started, where it ended up. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I never would believe that I'd ever accomplished basketball like I did. But I put a whole lot into it. <laughs> a lot of work. I hear them talk, I run to people all the time and say, I used to listen to you on the radio. I said, well, you probably did if you listen, <laughs> if you listen to Wildcat Ball. No, the UK is a great place. I mean, I, I wouldn't, not, have not been there, I'd say I'd, I'd miss that on a whole lot. Yeah, UK, everything down there is uh, fine for first class, Pete, the fans and teachers and everything. This, it's, uh, for me, it was a wonderful place to come from the hills of eastern Kentucky. <laughs> so. Johnny Cox is undoubtedly one of Kentucky's all-time greats. He's one of only four players in the history of the Kentucky basketball program to score over a thousand points and record over 1,000 rebounds in his career. The other three, Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Dan Issel. Pretty good company. Johnny Cox was a two-time All-American, and three times he was voted an All-SEC First Team Performer. He was inducted into the Kentucky Hall of Fame in 2001 and the University of Kentucky Hall of Fame in 2005. Johnny Cox's versatility, relentless effort on the floor, and his major role in bringing home Kentucky's fourth national championship has endured this boy from the mountains of eastern Kentucky to the Big Blue faithful for life. His number 24 jersey will forever hang from the rafters of Rupp. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time when we hear more tales from the rafters of Rupp. From the rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Devil Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.